Poetry is one of the oldest forms of human literature. From the Enuma Elish, to the works of Homer and Catullus, to the Kwakwakwa myths compiled by Franz Boas, poetry developed in numerous populations far removed from each other all over the world, suggesting that perhaps it either developed independently among populations as far flung as the coastal Salish tribes of Puget Sound to the Ashan Inca tribesmen in the Amazon rainforest and the classical Greek and Egyptian orators. Or that some ancient proto-poetic form of communication may have existed in the earliest human diasporas. Rhyme and meter were used by ancient bards, storytellers, history keepers, like stratigraphic layers in the soil to discern what came before and what came after, major events in their oral history, long before the written word became the main form of knowledge transmission. Aboriginal peoples in Australia have used song and poetry to navigate across vast landscapes, just as the fishermen of Newfoundland have used rhymes to remind themselves of natural features of navigation in dangerous North Atlantic waters off the Canadian coast. And the study of poetry is and of itself a form of archaeology, with its relative dating by births, deaths, battles, and historical events woven together in a tapestry of ideas and values that do not preserve in soil. So um, we were only doing the one poem today, and that's The Soil Remembers. It was originally written while sitting in Greyfriars Kirkyard, which is just over there, um, in the shadow of Edinburgh Castle. And it was uh, written after the Edin uh, it was written after the 2021 Dorston uh, meeting, which I attended um, under Julian uh, Thomas. Julian, <laughs> and um, it's an exploration of what archaeology reveals about past lives, as described from material culture, exploring themes of death as an act of nourishment enriching the soil, and archaeology enriching the understanding of local history. This poem also explores themes of infamy, transitioning to anonymity, and the inverse of power from the life state to the death state, as the dead lack agency over their own disposition and the transition of garbage into treasure in forms of discarded materials that can reveal about previous periods in time. And finally explores themes of destruction and renewal in the form of wealth acquisition from the dead through grave robbing and bodily decomposition, nourishing food plants relied upon by the local population. Okay. The soil remembers. From the earth I birth secrets and old bones, broken bits of other people's lives, and transmute treasure from forgotten garbage. I tell you the king's crown was robbed out years ago to feed a family of paupers that didn't even know his name. And afterwards, mice built their nests in his empty skull. All his jewels ended up on other men's fingers while his sons carved up his kingdom. Where are those fearsome princes wrestling before their father's throne? Who sings their names and mighty deeds? I tell you, they fought in an open field in bright armor and died of dysentery. Nameless now they lie in a charnel pit beneath the orchard rows with coins in their mouths for Charon. For over a thousand years, their bones grew grain for our bread and we drank up cider pressed from their blood flushed summer apples. They are the land as their fathers before them whose deeds are only preserved in soil for the soil remembers. 